Good morning, everyone. And a very happy Easter to all of you. I think I've seen most of you as you came in this morning, but I'll get a chance to catch up with those that I haven't done, perhaps at the end of the service today. It's great to be back on this glorious morning and to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. I'm very grateful to Alec Baird, who filled in for me in my absence last week at the last minute. I gather that you had a rip-roaring Uh, laughing old time of it in Palm Sunday as he bounced rubber Easter eggs and all sorts of things. I was sorry to hear that Susan Refford wasn't well uh, last weekend and we hope and anticipate that she'll be feeling better as the days go on. We do have uh, tea and coffee today after the service and there is another service at 11 o'clock If you have to get away, then enjoy the rest of your day. If you'd like to wait behind for the 11 o'clock service, it's a service suitable for all ages, and we hope that it will be very different in character to this service, but that it will be no less enjoyable for that. Thanks to those of you who have sent us cards in the manse, or wished us well for Easter, and thanks also to those of you who gave gifts or cards or good wishes to us as a family as we came towards David's wedding. Just the other week there, we had a fabulous day, a lovely day like today, a really happy family day. And it was great to see some of you up in the gallery as well, watching me in all my finery on that particular Thursday. So thank you for that. It is a beautiful day, but supposing the clouds filled the sky and the rain was pattering down upon us, nothing could dampen our spirits today, because today is the day that death died. Today is the day that of all days gives us hope. The world celebrates Christmas in big style, but in the church, the high point for us is today. This is the only reference to football today, I promise you, although it was a great result yesterday. (laughs) Celtic were lucky to get a draw. I read someone, one of my friends, saying online that for Christians, Every Sunday is match day, but for Christians, Easter day is the cup final day, and we have won the cup final even before we step foot on the pitch, because Jesus has scored the winning goal. Our gospel reading this morning, leading us into our worship, comes from Luke chapter 23. Two men, both criminals, were led out with Jesus to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. We've come today on this Easter morning to remember. And particularly as we gather around the table of our Lord, we remember his sacrifice for us. Let's join our voices together in praise of God in hymn number 378, Praised to the Holiest in the Height.
Let's on this most holy day join our voices together and join our hearts together as we humble ourselves before God in prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful King and Eternal Saviour, this is your holy day and we are thankful to be called your people. You are the righteous Son of God and our everlasting Lord. Sacred Majesty and Almighty Redeemer, you are the Lord of all creation and the ruler of the universe. You've overcome sin and death, bringing promises of life and love that last forever. Gracious Jesus, we caused your wounds at Calvary because we are sinful people. We crucified you, sending you to the cross because of our stubborn, rebellious, and selfish ways. Precious Lord, forgive our foolish mistakes and our grave errors. Pardon our hurtful words and our shameful deeds. And hear us now as we confess to you alone in the quietness of this moment and the tranquility of this place. <coughs> Victorious Savior, your blood has cleansed our sinful souls. Your sacrifice has restored us to God's favor. Without you, our lives are wasted, but with you, our hopes are made eternal. We recognize that Jesus is the only one who can save our souls from everlasting destruction. His name alone has the power to forgive our sins and to release us from death and despair. And so we rejoice and we celebrate the victory of our Lord and King this day and always. And finally, we make these prayers in your holy name and unite our spirits to you and to each other, to all who have gone before us and all who will come after, saying together the words which Jesus taught his first friends. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Three crosses. Two criminals one Christ. The passerby on that first Good Friday would no doubt see only three men dying on a cross. Nothing to distinguish one from the other, really. Three thieves, two who robbed possessions from other people, and one who was accused of stealing a position which the religious leaders of his day said was not rightfully his, to call himself the Christ or the Messiah, the Son of God. Two were lawbreakers, but one was the Lord of Lords. Two were crooks, but one was the King of Kings. Each of the two thieves got what he deserved. But Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, he got what we deserved. Three crosses, two criminals, one Christ. The passage I read to you earlier from Luke chapter 23 clearly describes the scene on that Good Friday. There was a cross of rebellion. There was the thief who hung at Jesus' side, who ridiculed him, abused him, who shouted, aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. You might think at first glance that that was an appeal for help. But when you read the context, you realize it wasn't. He was accused by his fellow thief 
of not fearing God. And he certainly had no faith in Christ. It was a cross of rebellion. And as a result, that man died of sin. The other thief was different. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, he said. And I can imagine, can you? He didn't shout that, but probably whispered it. Think about the fact that they were all three very close to death by this time. Jesus acknowledged this man's cry for help. And so that was not a cross of rebellion, but a cross of repentance. Somehow, something had changed in that criminal. Perhaps it was as he watched Jesus in the dignified way that he entered upon death. The cross of repentance meant that through the forgiveness of Christ, that thief died not of sin, but to sin. Anything that he had done in the past was now behind him. And he had no time to make up for the bad things he had done because he was about to die. Nor did he have any time to do good in the future. And the wonderful thing about his story, the penitent thief, is it's a bit of a deathbed confession. His bed, of course, was a cross of crude Roman wood. It reminds us that there is always an opportunity, even with our last breath, to confess Jesus as Savior. It reminds us that our eternal life and our forgiveness are not dependent upon us. Because this man had clearly done bad things in the past, or he would not have been on that cross. He would not have been referred to as a criminal, as a thief. And as I say, he had no time to do good works in the future. On the one side of Jesus, a cross of rebellion. On the other side, a cross of repentance. In the center was Christ himself, a cross of redemption. If the first man died of sin because he rebelled and abused Christ, and the second man died to sin because he appealed for help, then Jesus died for sin. I tell you the truth, he said to the repentant thief, today you will be with me in paradise. Was there ever words that were more music to the ears than that? I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. You will be. What a tremendous assurance that must have given to that man in his pain and his agony. And I hope today as we come on Easter morning, And as we prepare to approach this table, that it also gives us the assurance that we need. No matter what we have done in the past, through a simple confession and a profession of faith, Christ forgives those things. No matter what we have left of life, a short or a long time, to do good deeds, to try to somehow say thank you for all that God has done for us in Jesus. That is not our ticket to heaven. The cross of redemption, the one who died for sin, is. It was no accident that Jesus died between two criminals. Neither was it just to fulfill prophecy, though it certainly did that. 
the scene of three crosses, two criminals, and one Christ clearly draws a dividing line which runs through human history. A dividing line that presents each individual with a choice. Rebellion or repentance. One thief ended his life a condemned sinner. The other as a consecrated sinner. God's redemption in Christ is for all. Christ was not only not guilty, Christ was innocent. Which is why he became the perfect, spotless Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Words which I often say as we prepare to take the bread and the cup. That reflects upon the Jewish tradition the rite on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, where the high priest and only the high priest was able to enter the Holy of Holies through the veil and sacrifice the blood of a spotless lamb on the altar for his own sins and for the sins of the people. But he had to keep going and doing that year after year after year. We don't need to do that because the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, has been shed for us once and for all. And what does it say in the gospel about what happened when Jesus died? It says that the veil of the temple, the curtain was torn in two. Go away and read it for yourself this Easter day. And very significantly, it was torn in two, not from bottom to top, Because it wasn't something that was achieved by human hands. It was torn from top to bottom. That's what the gospel says. Because God made a way in Christ for us to enter his holy presence. The old hymn says it very, very well. Bearing shame and scoffing rude, in my place condemned he stood sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Amen. We're going to bring our offerings for the work of the church in the world on this Easter morning. And as we do, Eric is going to play and Brian Kirk is going to sing.
speaks as its maker bows his head. Curtain torn in two, dead are raised to life, finished the victory cry. This the power of the cross, Son of God, slain for us. What a love, what a cost, we stand forgiven. in the wounds for through your suffering I am free death is crushed to death life is mine to live one through your selfless love this the power of the cross son of God slain for us what a love what a cost we stand forgiven at the cross this the power of the cross son of god slain for us what a love what a cost we stand forgiven at the cross. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord Jesus, you have given everything for our salvation. You have sacrificed your life so that we may live forever in God's eternal presence. We can never repay the debt that we owe you, but we can support the work and the ways of your church with our tithes and our offerings. And so take these gifts and bless them, we pray, that others may hear the gospel message, the good news through the preaching of your word and the glorifying and praising of your name. Amen. In preparation to receive the elements, we sing together hymn number 376. It was on that night when doomed to know the eager rage of every foe, that night in which he was betrayed, the Savior of the world took bread.
sacrament today, we do not celebrate this sacrament as a sacrifice. Because the sacrifice that Jesus has given on the cross is a once-for-all event. But what we do is we remember. He commanded us to do exactly that. As we take the bread, as we share in the cup, we look back and we give thanks. But we also look around and we discern the body of Christ here among us both. Jesus himself by his spirit as the risen Lord on Easter Sunday And also we see him in the faces of our brothers and sisters in the family of God. But this also prefigures what lies ahead. We look forward to a time when all of those who have gone ahead of us in death into God's presence will welcome us with open arms into heaven. And what a celebration that will be. It will be like every Easter you've ever celebrated put together. It will be a time where joy will overflow from our hearts. The Apostle Paul, writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, tells us about the background to the celebration of this sacrament. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Did you hear that? Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Lord, we're thankful for the simplicity of this sacrament which calls to mind the depth of sacrifice you have made for each one of us and for all your people down through the generations. Through your pain we have joy. By your anguish we have peace. Because of your spiritual separation from God on the cross, we are reconciled to him. As a result of your death, we have life. Everything that was bad which fell upon you has brought good to us. Forgive us then for the sin that caused your pain and anguish, your separation and your death. And as we eat the bread and drink the wine, help us to recall the intensity and the extent of what you have done for us. Amen. In remembrance of him and in obedience to the commandment which he gave to his first followers, we do this. As we've heard on the night of his betrayal, after giving thanks to God, Jesus broke the bread and shared it with those around the table in that upper room. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, blood which is poured out for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace.
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On this Easter morning, when we look back to the cross, when we reflect on the resurrection, we give thanks that Jesus is alive, that he is with us. Take and eat and drink, remembering him with thanksgiving in your hearts.
May the peace of the risen Lord be with us all. Let us pray. Mindful that we are not the only ones in our church, our community, and our world who need pardon and peace, Lord, we hold before you in these moments those whom we love and whom we know need a touch from Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen Lord. And in particular this day, as we remember Jesus the Jew, we pray for those who are under pressure from the Jewish faith in that nation of the Ukraine. Lord, may they look to you as Messiah. We pray also for those who are hurting deeply at this time as a result of the terrible tragedy of South Korea. May they look to you as the Prince of Peace. Lord, may your love strengthen and give heart and inspiration to each one to the glory of your name. Amen. Our concluding hymn for this service is the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. Hymn 438. The Saviour who called us is the Lord who sends us. The Lord who sends us is the Spirit who empowers us. The Spirit who empowers us is the Christ who is with us always. We go in his name from this place to declare his glory this Easter day and every day. <laughs>